Hey everyone, Alex here for Bright Dog Academy. If you'd like me to personally answer any questions you may have about your dog, be sure to head over to brightdog.com where you can learn about my online training program, plus pick up a copy of the official Bright Dog Academy ebook. Stay. Now that I said the word, he's not going to move no matter what. I shouldn't even call his name. Max, let's go. I shouldn't even say any words he knows. Do you want to go to the park? Do you want to go for a car ride? I should be able to tease him with food. Oh, look at those yummy treats. And he doesn't break. I should be able to tease him with a ball, his favorite toy. Nice ball, look at that one. He doesn't break. I should be able to walk away, leave his line of sight. Bye, Max. See you later. And he doesn't break. No matter what, he's not gonna move until I tell him to because he's listening for a very special word. When I say that word, that means you can move and he will move. And that word is max free. I say the release word, now he moves. Training your dog to stay, very important command and it's very nice to have the confidence in your dog when you know he's not going to move unless you say. Now, stay is actually two parts. There's one word that means stay and there's another word or command you're going to use that means, okay, you can move again. And this is a mistake that I see many people make is they only teach the dog stay. And they don't ever teach a release word. And if you're not going to teach a release word, there's no point in teaching a dog to stay because you never know when he's going to break, when he's going to move. So we always teach a word, one word that means stay, don't move, and teach another word that means, okay, you can move. Now, the words that I would recommend to use, you can use free, that's what I use. You can say release, you really can say whatever you want. Um, ideally, you want it to be a word that you don't use often, so you don't accidentally release the dog. One word that I would recommend you don't use is okay. I would say no okay, here's why. Doorbell rings and you need to answer it. Dog follows you to the door, dog, down, stay and you have to open it up to get the pizza from the pizza guy. And how much money do I owe you? 20 bucks, okay. And your dog is now chasing the pizza man down the street because he was just listening for that word and it slipped. You didn't realize it, but you said it. We say okay so often in everyday language, it's, it's not a good word. So try to pick a word as your release word that you don't use often. If you speak a second language, use a, one of those words. Use a word that your dog doesn't, won't hear on accident, so you don't ever accidentally release it, all right? So these are the rules for stay. So step one with teaching our dog to stay. Step one, we do a couple of things. We get our dog used to hearing the word stay. We get our dog used to hearing our release word, and what I'm gonna be using for this is free. And we get the dog used to seeing the hand signal, which is this, all right? As well as pairing all three things together. That stay means stay, that free means move, and that that's what the hand signal stay looks like. So what you're going to do in step one, it's very basic, we're going to lure the dog into stay. Now, you can have your dog stay in any position. He can stay in, sit and stay, down and stay, stand and stay, rest and stay. I would recommend you start off having him sit or lay down, ideally lay down. So we have our dog down, and we're going to lure him. We're going to take a tiny piece of food, we put it in our hand, and we cover it with our thumb. And this is now the hand signal for stay. All right. So we have that food, it's in our hand, our dog is laying down. We're going to take our hand and we're going to put it right in front of the dog's nose, touching his nose, this close. Once our hand is there with the food, you're going to say stay. All right. And because you have your hand there with food in there, He's not going to go anywhere. Hands right in front of his nose, stay. Then one second later, that's it, literally one second, you say free or whatever your release word is. Okay, so I got our, our treat in our hand, stay. One second, free, and then you give him the treat. And that's it. You only say the command once, you don't repeat, all right? and we lure him. We, we, we get him into that position and we're using a food lure at this step, at the step, to get him not to move. So, treat in our hand, it goes right in front of his nose. Stay, free, 
treat. All right. This is step one for teaching your dog to stay. Step one with stay. We have our dog sit or stand, treat in the palm of our hand, we cover with our thumb right in front of the dog's face. I'm going to say stay, one second later I say free, and then I give him the treat and he can move again. All right. So Max is already laying down, but I'm going to have him stand, uh, sit instead. Sit. Okay, so treat in my hand. Ah, sit. Good boy. Right in front of his nose. Stay. Free. And now he can move. That's all it is. One second. Sit. Good boy. Treat in my hand. Cover with my thumb. Right in front of his nose. Stay. Free. He can move. Good boy. Let's try one more time. Sit. Good boy. Treat in my hand. Cover with my uh, thumb there. Stay. Free. Good boy. One second. That's all we're doing. Step two is almost identical to step one. The only difference now is we're going to work on the duration of stay. So you're going to, again, get some food, put it in your hand, have your dog lay down or sit. Our hand is going to go right in front of the dog's nose and we're going to say stay. And you're going to keep your hand there. And this time we're going to keep it there a little bit longer. We're going to aim for two to three seconds. That's it, all right? Because previously we were only doing this for one second. So food in our hand, it goes right in front of the dog's nose, stay. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, free. And then we give them the treat, and they can move, right? So very similar to step one, but now we're working on duration. And this duration, you will want to try to up. A good, you know, goal, a realistic goal, is try to add one second to that duration every single day, all right? Um, but again, we keep our hand right there. You're not moving, you're not taking a step back. We're, we're keeping that lure right there with the food for this step. All we want to do is work on the duration of our dog staying in that position. Step two, now we're working on the duration. So again, we have him sit or down, lay down, treat in my hand right in front of his nose. This time, we're aiming for about two to three seconds. After two to three seconds of us, of the dog staying, our hand being right there, you stay free, and then the dog can move. Max, sit. Good boy. So treat in my hand, right in front of his nose. Stay. Keep my hand there. Free. Good boy. Good job. Let's try again. Here, Max, sit. Good boy. Treat in my hand, right in front of his nose. Stay. Free. Good boy. Let's try with one of him uh, laying down. Max, down. Good dog. Stay. Keep my hand right in front. Free. Okay. So your goal should be around two to three seconds, and then from there you could start adding on, you know, a couple seconds or so uh, every few days, and start working on building up the duration. Step three was stay. Similar to step two, we're going to start off with a lure. Food goes in our hand covered with our thumb, and we put it right in front of the dog's nose. Dog, stay. Now what we're going to do is we want to start introducing the dog to some distance. So once you say stay, what you're going to do is you're going to move your hand away, the hand that has the treat in it. So treat in our hand, dog, stay. And what you're going to do is you're going to move your hand away, you're going to bring it back, and then you're going to give them the release word. So you will say, free, or whatever your release word is, and then they get their treat, okay, the same treat that you were using to lure them. So previously we worked on the duration, now we're starting to introduce distance. Once again, treat goes in our hand, right in front of the dog's nose. Dog, stay. We move our hand away, hand comes back, free, and we give them the treat, all right? That's the next step for teaching your dog to stay. So step three, now we're adding and introducing the dog to a little distance. So again, they sit or lay down, treat in their hand, covered with our thumb, right in front of the dog's face. We say stay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our hand away, bring our hand back, and then we say free, okay? So Max is already laying down, so that's fine. We'll just use this, treat in my hand, right in front of this face. Max, stay. I move my hand away, my hand comes back, 
Free. And now he can move. Good job. Alright? Try it again. Sit. Down. Good job. Stay. Hand goes away. Comes back. Free. Good boy. Alright? That's step three. The next step with stay is adding even more distance. So, similar to the previous ones, we start off with food in our hand, cover with our thumb, and put our hand right in front of the dog's nose. Dog, stay. Now what you're going to do is you're actually going to move your body. So you're going to take literally one step away from the dog. Okay. Food in our hand, dog, stay. You're going to take one step away from the dog, and then come back. Once you come back, you tell the dog their release word. Remember, I'm using the word free. Okay? Immediately release them, and then you give them the treat. So we're starting to add distance. We're beginning to build up to actually being able to walk away from our dog. Food in our hand, dog, stay. The dog's here, right in front of them. I take one step away, my entire body, I come back, I release them, free, and they get the treat. And that's all it is. Now from here, you're going to build on this part right here. You're going to eventually start taking multiple steps away. Um, let's say you add one extra step every two to three days. That's probably a, a good real goal if you're able to practice this every day. So, but at first, we're only taking one step. And when, your dog, when you take a step away, your dog is likely to break because movement is very exciting to dogs. That's why we go slow. I say at the start, we only take one step. But then, as you continue to practice this, you'll be able to build up more and more steps, right? One tip with this, try to keep your movement um, ba like balanced, even. When you're walking away, keep that same pace as when you walk forward. Sometimes people have a tendency to walk slow backwards, and then when they're coming back to the dog to release them, they get excited so they walk a little bit faster. And that, that excited energy makes the dog break early before you stay free. So just keep that in mind as you're practicing taking more steps away. So next step with stay, we're going to start adding distance, taking one step back. So again, we have the dog sit or lay down, treat goes in our hand, right in front of the dog's face. We say their name, stay. Hand stays up, we take one step back, then we return to them. You say free, then they can move. So Max is already laying down, that's fine. Treat in my hand, Max, stay. I take one step back, I come back to him, free. And now he can move. Alright, let's try again. Max, down. Good boy. Treat in my hand, stay. One step away, one step back, free. Good boy, good job, all right? And as he gets good at this, you start working on taking multiple steps. Come here, please. Let's go, good job, down, good boy, stay. So after a few days, you start working on taking multiple steps. Remember, keep your hand up the whole time. Always go back to him to release him. Don't say the release word until you go back. The next step with stay is proofing our dogs. Making sure they're actually listening for the release word and not just some other word or sound other than stay. Because often what will happen is you could say stay and then the next word you say the dog will break. And we want to make sure that's not the case. We want to make sure the dog is actually listening for the release word. So similar to the previous steps, food goes in our hand, we cover it up right in front of the dog's nose. Dog, stay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to start trying to trick them. You're going to talk to them. You're going to make movement. You can even call their name. And you're purposely trying to get the dog to move. You're trying to get the dog to move before you say the release word. Right? And if they do move, then we need to go back and practice a previous step. They're not ready for this. If they don't move, then what you do, when you're ready, you say the release word. Remember, I'm using free. Okay, say you the release word, and then you give them a treat. So this is a very important step because 
This is again making sure that they are listening for free or whatever your release word is and not just something other than stay, okay? So food in your hand, dog, stay. And then you try to get him to, okay, let's go, come on, yeah, let's go, Max, Max. And you try to get him to move, okay? The previous step, you, you've already taken steps away, so you walk away again, do anything you can to try to get him to break. Once they, have, once they don't break, you walk back to them, okay, free. And then they get up, they move, and then you give them the treat, right? That's the next step with teaching a dog to stay. So step five, we're proofing that the dog is listening for the word free. Same thing, treat in your hands, cut it with your thumb, right in front of the dog's face, you say stay. Now we start teasing them, talking to them, trying to get them to break. They don't break because their hand is right there. Then once we're ready, we say free, then they can move. Come back. Let's go. Okay, down. The boy, hand goes in front of their face with the treat. Stay. And now I try to get him to move. Okay, let's go. With your treat. Don't go for a walk. You want to go for a car ride? He doesn't move. Free. Good boy. So I say things that I know he normally reacts to to try to purposely get him to break to proof that he is listening and waiting for the word free. Down. All the way. You heard me. Good boy. Stay. Okay. Let's go. You saw how he jumped there. You ready to go? Do you want to go have dinner? Do you want your breakfast? What do you think? Ready to go? Yeah. Free. Good boy. All right. Good job. So I talk to him. I make movement. I'm purposely trying to get him to break. We're, re we're really working on, on self-control and the fact that he's listening for the release. Go with the scratch there. All right. We'll let him itch. We'll try one more time here. Okay, you ready? Down. Max, stay. And I'm really going to make it challenging. You ready to go? I'm actually going to move away. Let's go. Yeah. You want your breakfast? Do you want this treat? You want to go for a walk? Yeah. Boom. Free. Good boy, all right? So that's how to proof him to make sure he's listening for the release word. So now that your dog is at a level of stay where you can call his name and he won't break, you can take steps away and he won't break, it's time to finally get rid of the food lure and get him to just be responding because of the word or because of the hand signal. So what you're going to do is we're not going to use the lure anymore. You're going to get your dog's attention, put him into sit or down or rest, whatever position you want, and now you're just simply going to say the command, stay, all right? And you're going to give him the hand signal. Stay. And then we're going to try to test it. Walk away and see if you can walk away. Try to call his name like we did in the previous step and, and, and uh, proof the word. Okay? And you do that. If he breaks, we're not ready for this. We need to go back to the previous step. If he doesn't break, excellent. Then we, we walk back to him. We release him. Say your release word. Mine is free. He breaks then, because we allow him to, and you reward him. You give him a treat. Now when you give him the treat, it's with the opposite hand. If I use this hand for the command stay, I treat him with this hand. Because remember, we're weaning away the food lure. We don't want him relying and have him staying because we have food anymore. Now we're simply rewarding the behavior, okay? So with this step of stay, we're getting rid of the food and now switching it from be being a lure to being simply a reward, all right? So, Dog sits or lays down, hand, no food, stay. Walk away, talk to them, do whatever you can to try to get them to break. If they don't break, excellent, you go back to them. Dog, free or release, treat with the opposite hand. Step six, we are finally weaning away the lure. Have the dog sit, lay down, and now this time, you're just gonna use the hand signal and the word. Tell them stay, you try to get them to move, walk away at some distance, when they don't, you come back, you release them, and then you give them a treat with the opposite hand. Let's go Max. Down. Good boy. Good boy. So, ah, 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 down. Nothing in my hand. Stay. Walk away. Okay, you can move. You ready to go? Yeah. I'm proofing him, he's not moving. There's no, there's no lure. Free. 
toward him with the opposite hand. We'll try again. Sit. Down. Good boy. Nothing in my hand. Stay. Just hand signal on the word. That's a good dog. Do you want to go to the park later? And we can play with your toys? Yeah. That's a good boy. Okay, good. I'm proofing him. Up. Oh, he jumped, but he controlled. That's good. You saw him jump. He didn't move. I come back. Freeze. Treat with the opposite hand. Very good job. So the final step with teaching our dog to stay is teaching them to generalize. And it's basically it's about practicing in different levels of distraction. So if you have been at step six and your dog has stayed down really well and we decide to go out to a different level of distraction, let's say we go out to like the front yard, all right? We go out to the front yard and you try to practice stay with your dog, just like we were doing step six with, with no food. And you say, dog, sit and stay. And your dog breaks before you release him. That's okay, and that's actually most likely what's going to happen. So that means that in this higher level of distraction, we need to practice an easier version of the command. So we go down to step five. And we try to practice the way we did in step five in this new level of distraction. And guess what? Our dog still can't stay and is breaking before we tell him. So we go down to step four. Hey, he still not getting it. Down to step three. And he still doesn't get it. We have to go all the way back to step two because we're in a higher level of distraction. By the time we get down to step two, he's starting not to break anymore before we release him. So we don't have to go all the way to step one, but maybe at some point we would, right? So now that we have a higher level of distraction, we have to make and practice a simpler version of the command. So we're at step two, and what do we do? We practice and practice, and after a couple of days, we get back to step three. And after a couple more days, we get back to step four. And now it takes another week to get to step five. That's okay. And then eventually we get back to step six in this level of distraction. All right? So now that we're back to step six, just in the front yard, we go to another level of distraction. Now we will head over to the park. Where there's baseball games and bicycles and people, lots more distractions. And same thing happens. We're at the park. We try to tell our dog to stay like we did in step six with no, no food lure. He can't do it. So we'll go to an easier version, step five. Still can't do it that way. We go to step four. And hey, he can do it at step four. So that's good. We don't have to go to step three, two, and one. But we did have to go down a few steps because we added a higher level of distraction. So we're at, we're at that step. And we practice, we build back up at the park till we're back to step six at the park. And then we go to another level of distraction. So let's say the dog park. Anything, anytime there's other dogs around your dog, that is always going to be the highest level of distraction. These are just some examples. You can add your own things, go to the mall, go to the beach, um, you know, add your own levels of distractions. But what the goal here is in this final step is teaching the dog to generalize. And if you want your dog to succeed, as you add higher levels of distraction, the environment changes. Odds are he's not going to be able to perform that command at that higher level right away. So in order to get him to that higher level, we have to go back. We have to teach him an easier version of the command and build back up to that final step when we're in these higher levels of distraction.